Thanks for joining us on this course, Enabling DevOps Practices with Visual Studio Online Build. So today, uh, you are joined by myself, <laughs> David Tessar. Uh, I am a senior technical evangelist at Microsoft. Uh, you can see my blog there. I'm a, uh, I've got hundreds of videos, uh, no joke. <laughs> I've been shooting videos since 2007, all kinds of technical videos, courses on DevOps, all kinds of things like that. Uh, extreme sports enthusiast for sure. <laughs> and as far as my professional career goes, uh, I've been working in IT since 1998 and been at Microsoft uh, since 2002, a, lo a long time as an evangelist, but always kind of focused on that uh, ops, ops audience. Um, and then of course we have my, my GitHub profile down there, which will come in handy later. <laughs> And I'm also joined by Donovan. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Uh, yeah, so I am Donovan Brown. I am a senior program manager for DevOps. So I'm responsible for the experience that you have when you're using our DevOps experience on VSO. I happen to be the 12th best air hockey player in the world, which is always a... <laughs> <laughs> you hold Always gets that. a rounds of applause when is, I say that. Yeah. Do you're like a consistent 12th ranked or is um, it like... I've actually um, been 11, I've been 12, so I'm pretty good. I'm okay. pretty good there. Okay. Uh, I just had a table brought to Microsoft. So in the okay. commons, that's my table and I brought it so that we can share it and we can actually practice uh, there you go. Staying, in, yeah, right. staying in shape on that. Nice. Yeah, I also race cars for fun. I'm an avid developer. I've been slinging code since the 90s. So I bring the dev to his ops when we're talking about yeah, DevOps. We so we're gonna keep each other honest and, and balanced there. Uh, for our career, um, the reason that I got acquired by Microsoft, I feel like I got acquired, I was recruited to come and join because of my experience in the process consulting world. I flew all over the world helping teams use Team Foundation Server and implement Scrum and become more agile. And it seemed like a natural progression for me to come to Microsoft and help sell those tools. And, and now I'm a PM to help build those tools. So really excited about uh, my opportunity here. So I encourage you to join the conversation. You can follow me on Twitter. It's uh, at Donovan Brown. A lot of people are giving me their feedback and their comments and suggestions so that I can help make this uh, the best pro product we have. All right. Well, we have five modules for you today. And uh, I'm not going to list what all those are. But um, yeah, so stay tuned uh, beyond this overview module for, for all of the great content we have in store for you. Uh, some prerequisites for you. One is it would be nice if you had some Git experience. Uh, it is not a, a hard requirement, I would say, but things might make a little more sense since we will be working with Git a little bit. Uh, it also would be useful for you to just have a general concept of builds, like what is what is a build? <laughs> um, you don't need to know anything about Visual Studio Online uh, or Azure or really a whole lot else. Um, we assume that you're relatively technical since you are attending a, a course here about builds. <laughs> um, and if you want to follow along, you can go ahead and create a free Visual Studio Online trial account. Uh, it's free up to five users. It takes a couple minutes or so to get going. Uh, so that is a little bit about prerequisites for the course. So with that, we're going to start our overview uh, module here. We wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of um, some background first, right? We are, there's by no means are we gonna go into every nook and cranny here of Visual Studio Online, but we wanna explain some things up front here so we can more adequately explain build. Uh, one which is what is TFS versus VSO and how does that whole dynamic work? Uh, the other is, what are the improvements in build? And this will be probably the, the main focus of the course today, which is the, the enhancements within build. And then, what is this concept of DevOps practices that's in the title? What does that mean? And how is that going to relate to what you're going to learn for the rest of the course today? So what is our solution? Uh, our solution uh, for this entire space is Team Foundation Server. That's been around for a really long time. Uh, but come around 2011, uh, we launched this service equivalent, effectively, of Team Foundation Server. Uh, so this does a lot of different things. As you can see here, you know, source control, agile planning, test case management, the list goes down a whole bunch of things here. Uh, there's no way, again, like we're going to cover all of this today, but we are going to hone in on a number of different things here uh, that specifically mostly relates to the build capabilities and some of the things that you can do with it and how it relates to DevOps. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Team Foundation Server is a, I like to describe it as a collaboration hub. 
that has your work item tracking, your bug tracking, it has your, your builds, your release management, everything is combined into this fantastic solution. And as you said, we brought it online. And one of the key points of that is their build automation, which we're gonna be talking about today. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the other things that I think is also really important to understand is, is the cadence. So, you know, sometimes you get, hey, well, that's great that you're doing this, you know, new whiz -bang thing in Visual Studio Online, but name your excuse why you think you can't go to the cloud yet. And, and then what, what I would tell you is that, well, <laughs> we have a great cadence here at Microsoft in that, you know, every three weeks we push things into Visual Studio Online. Well, after roughly every quarter or so, uh, we push those features back to the TFS product on, a, on the on-premises, right, TFS. So even though you may see something, uh, and we're focusing today on Visual Studio Online, uh, eventually you will get to see those features on Team Foundation Server if that's what you need to, to do. So this equally applies for really TFS as well as even though this is focused on Visual Studio Online for today. Absolutely. So what are the improvements in build, Donovan? There are lots of improvements in build. It is completely new from the ground up. So if you have a lot of experience with our old XAML-based build, where we had you learn workflow to be able to do a build, you'll be nice to know and, pl and pleased to know that you, don't, you no longer have to understand workflow to do your build. You just simply need to know the tools you already know today. So if you're using Maven, you can continue to use Maven. If you're using MS Build, continue to use MS Build. You don't have to learn another what we call DSL or domain specific language to be able to do your builds today. So the XAML's gone. We've replaced it with an, an enormous task library that we're increasing and that's also open source so that you can go see how we written our tasks so that you can go write some of the tasks of your own in the future. It's completely web-based, so you no longer have to go inside of Visual Studio to build a build definition and then try to go monitor it somewhere else. You can stay in the web and have this nice single pane of glass that will allow you to do everything that you need to do as it pertains to your builds as well. So there's a lot of new flexibility there. We have a new agent-based solution that we're going to teach you how to install some of those agents later. We, have, we host those agents for you uh, in the cloud so that there's a zero installation process of getting your code actually building with uh, team build now. Yeah, very cool. Tons of changes. I mean, really, uh, you know, we looked at what are all of the feedbacks that we have been getting uh, for our product over some time and said, let's fix all those, those major <laughs> ones and just do a whole new build system. Right. Uh, we, and so. we also wanted one that was cross-platform, which is a huge improvement on our old build system. Microsoft has historically been the .NET company, uh, and we're trying to change that. And you see a lot of tweets about, I love the new Microsoft, and the new Microsoft is an open Microsoft where we're doing open source and we're open sourcing our task library. It's a Microsoft where we're trying to embrace Linux, and we have Linux running on Azure, and it's very easy to stand up. And we're actually even embracing Mac, so where you can do iOS development using our system. So no matter what technology you're using or platform that you're targeting, Microsoft adds value to that project. Yeah, if you if you snap to this, the slide, you can actually see that um, right here, this is a Macintosh. Um, that little black box on the right-hand side is the VSO agent running on the Mac um, waiting to do builds, uh, for instance, of iOS. Right? Absolutely. iOS, uh, you got an iOS app, you want to do test automation, for instance, uh, or builds, um, <laughs> it's you've, you've got that connection point right there. So you could run a sea of Macintosh uh, devices and have those be your build, the build agents. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Um, you also noticed Linux, right? That's another big a big one that's there. Uh, and we'll, we'll show a little bit of that more later. But um, really, truly, you know, uh, changing the game in terms of um, what people are doing in terms of that cross-platform, right? We realize that people are doing a lot more than Microsoft and .NET these days, and even us at Microsoft, right? We have a lot of open source technologies that we're supporting, especially in the light of, of Azure, right? Um, with Linux and And, and we even open sourced our core for ASP.NET, so you can even, run, you can, yeah, so even yeah, we're going over you, to the Linux yeah, world. Yeah, even .NET will run on Linux. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> Who thought so, that would ever happen? Yeah. I always think it's funny that 
until I joined Microsoft, I had never installed Linux or owned a Mac. And now that I work at Microsoft, I have an Android device, I have a Macintosh, and I've installed Linux more times than I can imagine. And I'm thinking, wow, you would have thought I would have done this before I joined Microsoft, not after. But it's a completely new Microsoft. It's a Microsoft where we understand that we have to play in those ecosystems as well. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what can you tell us a little more about the, the build DSL? Well, what's nice is that there is no build DSL, which is the beautiful thing. Before there was, and there are many of them already out there, MS Build, Maven, Ant, Grunt, Gradle, pick your tool. But what we don't want to do at Microsoft is introduce yet another tool that you're going to have to go learn before you actually be able to do your builds. So what we're going to do is you bring us your bits, and we're going to build those bits for you using the tools that you already know and love. So we have tasks that will let you do Gradle and let you do Grunt and do all those other types of uh, activities that you're currently doing on your builds today. We're going to let you do them in our build as well. Very cool. Okay. Oh, hiding our logs. This has been a pain point. I think our old build system was very optimistic that everything was going to go great every time, so we didn't make getting to those logs very easy. But we all know, if you've ever done any builds, that builds break, right? Especially CI builds. That's what they're designed to do. They're supposed to fail fast so that I can go back and fix them. But when they fail, I need to get to those actual log files so that I can see what actually went wrong. And what I'll show you when we start doing our first build is our logs are now in real time.